And I've entitled our message this morning simply, Have You Not Heard? That's what Jesus was, uh, the statement to him was made by the two men on the road to a mess. But if you will, let's look at our text, Luke chapter 24 and verse 6. I hope each one of you has a copy of the uh, paper I'm reading from. Simply put, the resurrection, he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. And then we drop down to verse 11. And their words that women were talking about what had happened and the fact that uh, his body was missing. And their words seemed to, to them as idle tales, as they, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulcher. Stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were not, or their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk? And they're sad. Why are you sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass? There in these days, have you not heard what's happened in Jerusalem? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and they have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which would have redeemed Israel. Beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the woman or the women had said. But him they saw not. Then said Jesus unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe, all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? Our text takes place approximately 1986 years ago. If you take the fact that we begin zero from our Lord's birth and we fast forward 33 years he lived and walked on this earth and if you'll figure it up, it's about 1986 years that this occurred. The greatest person that ever graced this earth, that ever walked on this earth, had been condemned by his own people. and crucified. The scripture says, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. Not only did they not receive Him, but they despised Him because He exposed their false religion, did He not? 
Folk, there was nothing false about our Savior and our Lord. But he joins himself with these two men that are on the road to a mess. And he said, what are y'all talking about? What are you so sad about? And they turned and said, haven't you heard what's happened in Jerusalem? About the fact that they've taken this man, Jesus, And they've crucified him. And that question is an age old question. Have you not heard about our Lord? Well, then Ricky and I were yesterday knocking on doors, and that was a question we were posing to everyone. Have you not heard? Of course, everyone heard about the name Jesus, but not everyone heard why these things occurred. But he said, why are you so sad? And they said, well, we thought that he was going to deliver Israel. Well, thank the Lord one of these days he is. Scripture says, by faith we are the children of Abraham. To make us children of Abraham makes us fall under the Israeli promise. He's going to deliver his people in me. But they thought that everyone would surely know what had happened in Jerusalem. Nothing like that had ever occurred. And here was a just man. They found no fault in him. Even Pilate, who was in charge, and gave the go-ahead to crucify him. Actually, Pilate said, hey, I've examined this man and I found no fault with him. And don't bring me some water. I, I'm washing my hands of what's going to happen to Jesus. You know what the Jews said? Let his blood be upon us. And folks, that's an awful request they made. When you look at those six million Jews that were put to death and Adolf Hitler's reign in uh, Germany. Remember, that was their plea. They said, let his blood be upon us, on his own people. But we look back, how many people today that haven't heard of why Jesus endured that cross? There's crosses everywhere, you see. Joe Gaston takes it enough important in his life that every year at this time he allows himself to get on the cross and stay there for 11 hours. Now, you see crosses today wherever. The sad part of it is, as indicated in our bulletin for today, the body is still attached to the cross. Well, the good news is <laughs> no one's on that cross. That cross is bare. <clears throat> Moreover, that tomb is bare where they placed our Lord. I've had the privilege different occasions, but the first time in 68 with the Stafford Harris and myself, who the Stafford's going on to be with the Lord now, but he and I joined a group and we went to the Holy Land. June of 1967, Israel had just recaptured Jerusalem. But we went to the Holy Land and I had a little earpiece on my glasses little screw had worked itself out and I, I'm looking at the tomb and they've got a little rail thing there where you don't tear up the scratch up the place where our Lord's body lay and I looked over and my earpiece fell off into the where the uh, body of our Lord was 
So I had to find the keeper of the place and go retrieve my glass. So folk, uh, if you ever go and see where our Lord's body was, you'll never regret it. That's what caused me to want to go when Brother L. Chester Gwynn came and visited our church and he'd been making numerous trips over to the Holy Land and he showed the picture of the place called Calvary. And I said, I gotta go. But even if you don't get to go, folk, it's there. That grave, that tomb is still empty where our Lord's body was. The big question, why was he crucified? <clears throat> it wasn't because he was guilty of sin. The scripture says he knew no sin. He's the only person that ever walked on this earth that can be set up. The rest of us were born in sin. You know of anyone that's not a sinner? If you're here today, will you come stand right here? But according to my scriptures, according to the scriptures that our Lord gave us, it says, if you say you have no sin, you're a liar. Right. And the truth is not in you. Because all of us have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Every one of us. But it was a debt, the debt of sin that had to be paid. Well, your sin and mine. His love for us compelled him. To lay down his life. That you and I might live with him forever. He said they don't take my life from me. I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I have power to take it up again. Folks, that's a, the, the marvelous fact. We celebrate Easter today, and it's, it's not about the money rabbit. It's about the lamb, isn't it? Amen. The lamb that was slain. Can you imagine our Lord looking out on the people that he loved. And he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And folks, that is a scene that will be forever dear to the Christian. The price that was paid that we could not pay. Folk, death could not hold him. This was not an idle tale at verse 11. If you look back at your paper, it says, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. There's nothing idle about the fact that our Lord defeated death. He became the first fruits of the resurrection. Scripture says, as in Adam, all of us actually died. It's not verbatim. But also in the second Adam shall we be made alive. Jesus is called the second Adam. The first Adam and Eve became sinners, did they not? He is a risen Savior, verse 6, at the top of your page. Once again, look, see what it says. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Our Lord is risen. He's defeated death. He appeared unto his disciples. And the scripture says he appeared under over 500 before he took his journey back from whence he came. 
into the presence of the Father. If you will look at your last your paper and read those last three verses on uh, your page. When he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they steadfastly looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into this heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. The scripture says today he's seated by the right hand of the Father, Make an intercession for us. Waiting for the time the Father's going to say, Son, it's time to go get my people. And folk, that promise is valid today. We'll wait it's coming, do we not? If we don't have that hope, folk, as the scripture says, we are of all people are all men most miserable. The basis of our faith literally is built on Easter. Did Jesus defeat death or did he not? Folk, he defeated death and as we read in the book of Acts just now, he's ascended back into the heavens seated by the right hand of his father. He's going to come get us, isn't he? He's going to change our vile bodies. As it is, flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of heaven, can it? But we, he's going to give us a body like his, like him. And that's why John said it. When we shall see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And folk, I challenge you today. Easter Sunday would be the best time on earth to make peace with God. But if you haven't made peace with the Lord and confessed him before your fellow man, that's your number one need. You can't afford to leave this old earth without it because there's no returning. But if you're here this morning, it's your soul that's involved and eternity is involved. You get to choose because of what our Lord did if you want to spend eternity with him. Simply where you are, say, God, I, I know I'm a sinner. You don't have to say it out loud. God know he can read your heart. And I'm trusting your son to be my savior who gave his life for me. He paid the price that you can't pay. And, folk, if you'll do that, the Lord will save you now and forever will give you eternal life. Uh, have a brother and Ricky's going to come and Linda's going to come. We're going to have an invitation song. If you're here this morning and you want to join this church by another church like faith or if you want to come on a statement if you've been baptized by a Baptist church then you come. But if you haven't been baptized you need to take care of that. If you trust Christ you need to follow the Lord in baptism. That's the first act of obedience. The first act.